In a network of pipes, we follow the total pressure through the components of the network, in this case to work out the shaft work that is required in order to pump water from a height of 1.5 meters to a height of 8.5 meters through the pipe network shown here. To do this, we will consider the loss coefficient of each element in turn. For example, the first one is the pipe inlet. It has diameter 1 meter, the density of the fluid, it's water, so it's 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed, and it's coming in at a speed of 3.5 meters per second. From the density and the velocity, we can work out the dynamic pressure, a half rho v squared. We work out the Reynolds number, and then we look up the value of k, the loss coefficient, for that component at that Reynolds number, and then we multiply that by a half rho v squared in order to get the change in total pressure across that component. And if we want to, we can work out the change in the head because it's equal to the change in the total pressure divided by rho g. So we do this for the pipe inlet, then for the pipe up to the pump. We don't yet know the total pressure rise across the pump. Indeed, that's what we're trying to work out. Then we have the valve, then we have another pipe, we have an orifice, and then we have an exit loss. And now we can follow the total pressure through the network. At the top of the left tank, the speed is zero, so the total pressure is PA, atmospheric pressure, plus rho g h, where h is 1.5 meters. And I've worked that out here. At entry to the pump, we've lost some total pressure due to the pipe inlet, and then due to the pipe itself, so the total pressure has reduced. At exit to the pump, we have the total pressure plus x, which is our unknown. And then by the time we get to the right-hand tank, we've lost some total pressure due to the valve, some due to the pipe, some due to the orifice, and some due to the pipe outlet. And this gives us the total pressure in the right-hand tank, including our unknown x. However, we know that the total pressure there must be Pa plus rho g h, where h now is 8.5 meters, and so that's this value here. And now we solve for x by equating these two expressions. So we have Pa plus x minus 203588 pascals is equal to Pa plus 833. 5 pascals, which means that x is equal to 286973 pascals. And to get the required power from the pump, we multiply this by the volumetric flow rate, 2.75 meters cubed per second times 286973 Pascals, which is a newton per meter squared, and that gives us 789.2 kilowatts.